At different parts in physics, we may have to solve systems of equations to get to an answer in a problem. Uh, you can often do that by solving using substitution or uh, solving by graphing, solving by elimination. If we have a lot of equations, though, you say more than uh, two equations with two unknowns, uh, it might be easiest to solve using matrices. Uh, so this will be an overview of how to set up a problem like that with a couple examples. So let's assume we'll have three equations with three unknowns. The process works for two equations with two unknowns or four equations with four unknowns. We can extend it to any number of equations with the same number of unknowns. The first thing we'll want to do is standardize the format for those equations. We're going to uh, rearrange these equations so that we have all the variables with their coefficients on one side of the equation and any constant terms <coughs> on the other side of the equation. And then I think it's useful also here to, uh, to line up similar variables. So you'll notice here that all the x's are in a column for my three different equations. All my x's are together with their coefficients together. All the y's are together and all the z's are together and then all the constants are over on the other side. We're going to translate this into a set of matrices or into a matrix equation. The first matrix that we're going to have is going to be all the coefficients on x, y, and z in these three equations. And writing the equations out this way makes the, the transfer into matrix form very easy. The matrix is going to look very much like the, the equations do. So we'll have A, B, and C, E, F, and G, J, K, and L in that first matrix, just the coefficients on x, y, and z. So you'll notice that all of these are x coefficients, all of these are y coefficients, and all of these are z coefficients, and that's in the first equation, in the second equation, and in the third equation. Uh, next up, that's multiplied by an equation x, y, z, sorry, by a matrix x, y, z. Now, if you haven't covered uh, matrix multiplication before, this may seem a little bit odd, but one thing you find with matrix multiplication is that you're going to be multiplying this row by this column, and then this row by this column, and then this row by this column. And so we end up getting back to, uh, uh, back to those three expressions there. Uh, and then last up, we're going to have our answer or our constant matrix here. That's going to be D, H, and m in this case, just those three constants that we had up here in exactly the same order. So now let's think through an example uh, that would come from a physics class like this. If we have uh, electrical circuits, one thing we may have to do with these is write rules using, uh, write equations using uh, these two rules called Kirchhoff's loop rule and Kirchhoff's junction rule. And so these four equations are uh, the, the type that you might get from something like that. Um, so just an example, we've got three different values of I, which is uh, current in a circuit um, that we're trying to solve for. And we're able to, or sorry, four different values of I. And we were able to write these four different equations that relate uh, those four variables or some subset of those four variables. Uh, first thing I'm going to do on this is to standardize the format for the equations so that I have all the variables, all the i's, on one side of the equation with their constants and all the constant, or sorry, with their coefficients and all the constant terms on the other side of the equation for each one. So this one I'm going to rewrite as uh, i1 uh, and then minus i3 and minus i4 and minus i5, that's all my i terms, and that'll be equal to, well, no constants in this one, so just zero. This one, I'll have 20 i1, uh, 70 i3. I don't have an i4 term. I'm just going to put a plus zero in there to remind myself that that spot should be blank in my matrix, or should uh, should be zero in my matrix. I also don't have an I5 term, so plus zero there, and then that's going to be equal to 440. Over here, that'll be 20 I1 plus no I3 term this time, so zero there. The I4 term is 80 times I4, and there's no I5 term, so zero and that's equal to 400. And last one, we've got 20i1, no i3 term, 
no I4 term, and we've got 200 I5, and that's equal to 360. So then the matrix form of that equation, I do my coefficients, and uh, we need to remember that uh, 1 it can be a coefficient here. So I1 doesn't have any numbers in front of it, but the coefficient, coefficient would be 1 in that first equation. Since it's a minus there, we do need to include the negative on the coefficient. So negative 1 for I3, negative 1 for I4, negative 1 for I5. In the next row, I've got 20 for I1, 70 for I3, and 0 for the other two. Next row, I've got 20 for I1, 0 for I3, 80 for I4, 0 for I5. Next row, I've got 20 for the first coefficient, 0, 0, and 200. That is multiplied by the, uh, um, by the matrix I1, I3, I4, and I5 to get us our constant term matrix, 0, 440, 400, and 360. Now, we have these in matrix form, so how do we solve these things? When I have a matrix equation set up like this, um, we, we have some operations with matrices that can get a little tricky, and it's, it's definitely different than working just with uh, scalar numbers or even with vectors. Uh, so this is one where, where we want to learn the basics, but let our calculator do the hard work for us. Um, so we'll go through how to, how to set this up in the calculator. If I have these, uh, these coefficients in a matrix with the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and J, uh, and then that's going to be multiplied by my variable matrix, the x, y, and z, to give me an answer of my constant matrix, the k, l, and m. I I'm looking for numbers for x, y, and z. It turns out the operation that I need to do to get that looks sort of like it would if these were, uh, if these were all numbers. So if these were all numbers, you know, this being our coefficient, this being our variable, and this being some constant, we would divide both sides by our coefficient. And we'd end up with our variables equal this constant divided by this coefficient. Or you could think of that as 1 over this coefficient times um, those constants gets us to this value. Uh, 1 over or, or um, you know, this, this constant to the negative 1 power. And so it actually does look very much like that, um, or it looks exactly like that when we solve this. The operation we're going to do to get x, y, and z here is going to be our coefficient matrix. So that's the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J. Uh, we'll take the inverse of that matrix and then multiply it by our constant term matrix. Uh, that's going to generate a matrix that has three entries. The top one is going to be x, the next one is going to be the y value, and the bottom one is going to be the value for z. Now, how exactly that works, uh, I'm not going to worry about for this video. The calculator takes care of the, the mechanics for that. But um, it is something that's, that's interesting to learn about, and I would encourage you to, to seek other resources for that. But that's outside what we have time to learn about in a physics class. That's uh, something we'll let the math folks stick to. So now, how do we set this up in a calculator? Our last step then is to uh, do these matrices, uh, do this matrix operation from what we derived earlier. Uh, so we'll type that all into the calculator uh, on the 83, or sorry, 84 plus, um, and I think on the 83 it's in the same place. Uh, right down here is our matrix option. So we do second and then matrix. And then I'm going to go to Edit, and I'll just pick one that's open here. So matrix E is open, hit Enter. Um, I need uh, my first matrix to be 4 wide and 4 tall. So I'll just select 4 on both of those. And then I'm going to enter the values that I had for those. So that was uh, on line 1 and negative 1, negative 1, oops, 1, Enter. There we go, negative 1. Enter negative 1, negative 1, and then I had 20 and 70, 
and zero. Oops. Okay, uh, zero and zero, and then twenty, zero, eighty, zero, and twenty, zero, zero, two hundred. Okay, so I've got all my values entered there, and then I'm going to go to second matrix again and do another one. This time I need it uh, four tall by one wide, so that's four by one. Um, and then my uh, my values on this one are going to be uh, let's see, it was zero, four forty, oops, zero, four forty, four hundred, and three sixty. Okay, and second matrix one more time. And this time I'm going to enter my operations. I'm going to select that first matrix I made. And, oops, quit first. And then second matrix, first matrix, and then to the negative one power. And then second matrix again and select my second matrix. And I get 8, 4, 3, 1. And looking at the format for my answer, I1 is going to be 8, I3 is going to be 4, I4 is going to be 3, I5 is going to be 1. So that's solving a system of equation with matrices. Uh, it gets pretty fast once you've uh, had a little practice with it, um, as long as you know how to set it up. And it's really useful if you have more than two equations and two unknowns.